next week's race with this week's preparation. All right, so tell me why. Because your competition will be changing and they're gonna be doing changes to beat you because you beat them. I see. This week. But next week, it's it's a totally different world. I see. So you have to keep improving. You have to improve upon your improvement and redo it time and again. That's the only way you stay on top. Exactly. But I have 550 first place races. I see, yeah. And <laughs> it works. That yeah. formula is... Uh, Explain to me about, about the... Uh, tell a story about the race of the 409 and the, and the inventions that you did to the 409. Well, basically, um, uh, remind me, I'll show you the book here that, that okay. lists the years and everything. Okay. But this was in 60, and they had two and one sixteenth inch intake diameter valves. Okay. And I increased it to two and three sixteenths. That was one of my innovations. Ford or nobody else knew what I was doing on the thing until we ran, and I beat them. Three out of three. <laughs> three out of three. That was uh, here in Kansas. No, no. That no. was Oklahoma City. That was that Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City drag strip at the fairgrounds. Okay. And what were you running? I was running a bubble top. 61. The 61s had just come out. I see. And we put my engine in Tubbs' car. <laughs> right. And I drove it until I was drafted <laughs> I see. into the service. <laughs> I see. Well, explain to me the, uh, some of the things you did to the 59 Corvette to set the world record. Oh, um, it's uh, the big thing that made the biggest difference. We used on the centrifugal advance in the distributor, mm -hmm. why we used the 216 six cylinder Chevy springs that go uh -huh. into there lighter that, you bet that lets it advance quicker mm -hmm. and yet uh we use 12 to 14 degrees initial advance initial. on okay. it mm -hmm. and if you try to go you know too close to 40 that's our total mm -hmm. we used 40 degrees total, total. 40. Mm -hmm. and if you try to do it too quick the engine won't start it'll right. just uh, right uh, right right uh, you know so those springs let that thing advance quicker. Really quick. It was all right. in by 3,000 or less RPM. Uh, about 25. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we were run 40 degrees. Yeah, but and you got to think. That's why we were. That's 1959, 1960. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Right. Those tricks are used today. Yeah. You know what I mean, they're tricks today. Well, it's all electronic. Yeah. Right. But do you it's understand what I mean? Computer chip. Those, you were using those tricks back in 1960. Exactly. Yeah, amongst other things you did. Oh, yeah. To create the world. Well, and then the big thing uh, to make the engine stay together for a quarter mile, I mean, to be under power. Uh -huh. for a quarter of a mile while we had to uh, rewind the uh, the cable that goes from the distributor okay. to the fuel meter on the Rochester injection. I see. So it's... <laughs> You had lots of tricks. Right? Oh yeah, you bet. You you can't win a race with just one of your tricks. No, you got. It to has that. a combination, but they've got to be compatible. Some things that you do say, boy, this is this is the best thing since bottled beer. Right. And then you put it with something else that you had that really did work, and, and it'll go slower. It'll go slower, right? So you have to make sure everything's compatible. It's like nowadays, too many doctors don't check on the background of the pills that are people taking mm -hmm. they assign them other pills in some cases it kills them exactly and yeah, racing's the same way same way everything has to be uh compatible together exactly. they have to uh, teamwork uh, yes teamwork they have to be able to work uh, to, uh like a like an engine you, you know bet. Like right. it, it has valves to, have to open and close in the right time it has and... to work in concert <laughs> exactly yeah but that's uh, that was it, and you know, on the 409, uh, it, we had a single AFB Carter AFB. Single AFB Carter. Yeah, that Carter. was before Edelbrock got a hold of them. Well, that's long before they. Oh did. yeah, but yeah. those, um, you know, uh, what they have, they have two-step metering rods in that, and okay. I made a three-stepper out of the metering rods. Just modified the metering rods that go in the jets. Okay. And, of course, I had my own dyno, so I knew what to do. I knew wh how it was going to behave before I ever put the engine in the car. Okay. That's the beauty part of an yeah. engine dyno. Tell me a little bit about 1960. That was your big year in your life. Oh, yeah. You yeah and how it all came together and you got 
as just a kid, uh, just a, yeah. a, a punk kid, as you right. called yourself, <laughs> got flown to Detroit, Michigan. Tell me about right. how that trip and how it come about. Well, you know, I was so excited, you know, right. uh, getting that opportunity from the head man himself. You right. know, he was the head of Chevrolet at that time. Right. Later, he was the head man for GM. But at that point, he was, uh, and he was the father of the 55 Chevy. I see. And, um, and that's so, Ed... Uh, Ed Cole. Ed Cole. Did yeah. you call him Ian Cole? Yeah, uh, his Cole. middle initial was Ian. Okay. But anyhow, um, yeah, that was a, that was a, like a <laughs> flight to paradise. Right, in right. Way. And um, but he was honest with me. Um, well, Vin, uh, wasn't Vince? It was. Um, oh gosh, who was that guy's name? I can't think of the guy that was the link between me and them, but he said, now, he says, we're going to be asking you questions. Wasn't it Ralph how, Miller? No, no, no. Oh. Ralph was here in Kansas. Okay. But uh, this was one of Ralph's buddies. I mean, they're, uh, it's cliqueish, you know, right. like like a political party. You right. Know? <laughs> they, they scratch each other's back. Right. And, but... Um, he told me, he says, now, we're going to be asking questions. Um, now, if you do not want to divulge your racing secrets, mm -hmm. he said, we will be, of course, um, taking credit for this because it was a Chevy Corvette that you <laughs> right. claimed to fame, man. Right. I said, that's fine with me. I don't care. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but little did I realize that that statement was going to open the floodgates for me <laughs> right and later on that year because just about everything that was really good that helped my career uh happened there yeah. in 60 1960 yeah. and you were just a kid oh yeah and you were up in the main executive offices oh, yeah. of chevrolet right. with vince piggins oh, and yeah. Ed, yeah and vince was the head of um what was it? Uh, performance resources. Or performance something? resources. Yeah, he was the man, and you were you were there with the the two biggest wigs of of Chevrolet. You met. Yeah. I was fortunate. Yeah, it's fortunate. <laughs> and then you come home, and they send you a a four hundred nine engine. Yes. To your local dealership. And that was the small valve version. I see. And I was the one that increased the valve. Size. And they said, "Here, take this engine, work on it, you do bet. what you want do to with it, you want to. and send the." And yeah. when you start drag racing it, they figured I was going to be a professional drag racer, mm -hmm. and so they says, "When you're, um, when you." are running this thing he says it'll be with your modifications just like the 61 corvette 315 horse mm -hmm. was a result of that meeting that i had That's right. in 60. the 315 horse you're yeah. you were you are responsible for the 315 uh, yeah horse. yeah if they had any problems except for those aluminum heads that dundolf put on them I see. But you know they raised the compression. I mean, all the things you I did, did, right? They you did. did to the '59 Corvette right. to set the world record. Yeah, and the '61 Corvette is is based off yeah, your it's a ingredient. Reflection. It's a reflection of your enhancement. Right. That's really cool. But it was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then after that, you you uh, they send the Ford from California to race you in your '61 bubble yeah, top that you've done all these enhancements. They, they sent it to beat, beat you, <laughs> and you beat it three in a row yeah. in Oklahoma City. Right. And sent them yeah. packing. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> sent them packing. And Chevy was very upset. I had won. It was supposed to be two out of three. I see. And uh, like I say, they were popping champagne and <laughs> for victory, you know. And yeah. we, we come up to the line again. And uh, that's when the guy missed about three steps at the bottom and <laughs> fell down. Boy, he was upset. Yeah, you know, he won't know why he was racing again. I says, look, the car will go faster. I just don't want to blow it. Too much experiment stuff that I have in there. Usually we use the rule for every, um, every 1,000 RPM, we go with uh, 10 pounds of oil pressure. Okay. That's kind of the general rule to use. Okay. And so if you're running uh, 7,000 RPM, you need 70 pounds of oil pressure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was using that formula, but yet I didn't know if the bearings, if the rods, if all the that was, all was gonna hang were going to hang in there for yeah. me. Right. And I was lucky once again. And you, wrote, and you raced the third race because they were whining and crying, saying that their car, they, need, they had something they needed to fix. Right. 
and you didn't. And like, whatever uh, they did, remember, like I told you, sometimes yeah. the new things you do yeah. are more detrimental than yeah. they are positive. So they they come back and got beat <laughs> even worse. worse yeah, Matt. I see. And I didn't. I pushed the car a little harder, but not that much harder. I see. I mean, so then in '61, you got drafted into. Oh the yeah, that ended everything for me on right, racing. Right, right. But Ralph stayed loyal to me and sent me all the the. Uh, uh, updates and uh, all the service bulletins. I there. see. That's great. So, so you, you kept in the know from um, Southeast Asia. Oh, yeah. I see. Well, actually, most of my time was in Germany. In Germany. Okay. I was only over there TDY, temporary duty, for 30 days at a pop. Okay. Well, that's good. So then in 1965, Ralph Miller knows or becomes aware that you are getting out of the military. Oh yeah, you bet. And sends you the 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 information in the brochure on the '65 Corvette yes. with the 396. Right. And then a, a few weeks later, his next correspondence to you <laughs> was about this 200 run of the Chevelle. Right. And, and asked you, would you rather have that or both? And of course, you said, I can't afford both. That's it. I'll take the Chevelle because the Corvette they're going to make a few thousand of right. them. Right. She said, I'll take the Chevelle and said, so you sold the Corvette. And which eventually you found out was serial number zero zero one. Right, 001. I didn't know that. They had you a serial number number one of the sixty five three ninety six Corvette. Well, in that uh, one booklet on the on the Grand Hall, thing, mm -hmm. I think they call it Great Hall. Anyhow, it states in there, you know, uh, about that being, you know, the number one. Yeah. <laughs> number one Corvette. But you wasn't that, aware of that, that in 1965. No. It's just a car, well, the Corvette. You wanted the low production I car. think um, I think Vince Piggins was the man that got me that first low number. He, Vince Remembering Piggins. Remembering me from the 59 sure. that day. Sounds like Vince Piggins and Ralph Miller were really good friends. Oh, they were really true close, to you. you bet. Yeah, they really were. They, well, they and, kept up with you. And so was Mr. Cole. I Mr. Mean, Cole, I had yeah. a, yeah. I had a, um, I had the three musketeers in my corner. Oh, <laughs> tell me about it. Tell me about it. So you get the Chevelle when you return home, and they sent it here to Tubbs. Uh, to Tubbs. Yeah. And you picked it up there. Well, um, before I picked it up, I took the front end off the car, and we um, undercoated everything. Uh, oh, of course. So yeah. the car is undercoated. It's undercoated. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Well, the car looks. I mean, it's fabulous for being parked since seventy one, but it's been inside here. I oh mean, yeah. It's, it's probably. The, the, well, the uh, it sat outside for about three years. Well, back when you you drove the car. Well, um, actually, when I had the break in, uh -huh. uh, I was bankrupt. I more see. Or less. I see. And so the thing I built the new shop. Okay. You know, I got an SBA loan through my service work. Okay. And so consequently, uh, it it was in here, and uh, it was the first car in this shop. I and see. It was. Um, I took the keys in January 4th of 75. That's when I officially brought it, the old girl in. Over Drove here. her in, hitting perfect. But it hasn't yeah. been uh, licensed or titled nope. or driven since 71. Nope. It's been here since 71. 71. Yeah, so. Well, that was nice that, that you know you got the car from Germany. They stayed in touch oh, yeah. with you, you, met. you know, and and that's how you became. Well, actually, them. I was in Nome, but I had to go th route through Germany because. Uh, okay. I was on, <laughs> and then and then then when you got out of out of the army, then you did a, a small stint with uh, helping the Ford, uh, uh, yeah, the GT Shelbys, right. and then you eventually um, became owner of Vince Piggins. Helped you get the the the, the sixty seven L eighty eight Corvette, bet. right? Which yeah, one without, of twenty? Without uh, without those people. Yeah. I wouldn't have got that car because I wasn't that big a splash in the puddle. <laughs> yeah. And then you became, of course, Vince Piggins knew you would race for Chevrolet if oh, he got yeah. you a car. Well, then I yeah. did a lot of testing, you know, on my dyno. He'd send me parts. And, I see. And he was very kind because I got to keep the parts. And, you know, they were carburetors. The uh, the thing with the Magnapulse ignition, that yeah. was my thing to keep it from building moisture. As the temperature would change, it's like blowing your breath on a glass, a window pane when mm -hmm. it's freezing outside. I see. And it fogs up. Well, that's moisture, and that moisture would destroy the. Uh, and you drilled it out. Well, I drilled an in and an out for air to and, flow. Right. 
I see. And yeah, and it's ironic because uh, you saw, uh, well, you probably didn't see, there's a Buick, a 94 Buick with an LS6 engine in it. It was special ordered by my brother-in-law in 94. And they had already made the change. They came out in 92 with the OptiSpark ignition. Uh -huh. And they had trouble with that thing drawing moisture. So I called them up and I says, hey, you know, this worked with, uh, yeah. with the Magnapol system. That's what you need to do. I can take you out there and show you on that car. Okay. It has an inlet and an outlet, a vacuum. Now, I think they use a bigger orifice size. I use 40 thousandths on the drilling. On the drill. But uh, I think they probably went with 62 and a half, which is a 60 you have, of an inch. You had a lot of uh, innovations yourself. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and I can do them some good on this C7 if they yeah. would give me right. a shot at right, it. Right, because they have some problems with some things that you feel that you could clear up. They're, in, they're having trouble with guides. I see. Oh, they, yeah. On okay. the on, on the, the C7, the new Corvette. Yeah, on the Z06. The Z06. Is. And uh, of course, they they still uh, <laughs> have you know other other problems too. But those are the ones that they're getting getting a lot of trouble on. Wow. Well, you've had a a great time in your life. Oh yeah. Had a lot yeah. of fun. But I want to go one more. We'll time. Go one more time. <laughs> and you have plans of putting the old '65 Chevelle down the street. Oh, a I few want more to drive time. it. You know, yeah. I promised the people at the car show, we have a big car show. This okay. is our 40th year, I think, um, to show cars and stuff. The Tumbleweeds is the name of the organization. Okay. Well, that's great. Well, I'm here with Cliff Gottlip, and it's been a, a great time <laughs> okay. with you. Um, <laughs> Maverick engineer, um, legend racer. And I taught five years at the college. And talked five years at the college and have... And you have five engineering degrees. From Heidelberg, a, Germany. From Germany. Just a super guy, super intelligent, and, and it's been my pleasure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. See you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Can you pass that to Elena or uh, what's sure, her name? Sure. Because I think I could get, you know, I'm old enough now. <laughs> yeah. The opposite is when I started. Yeah. But I think it would, it would uh, you know, help fill the gap you know the reader gap with hot rod sure because sure. hot rod was the bible <laughs> hot rod is the bible <laughs> well, uh, i will forward this um for whatever hot rod needs oh okay they, they have a need for yeah. it that's what i'm here to do um well so. with jack thrasher you know he's getting up in years okay. and uh, if we have time we'd like to take you out to his okay. museum okay yeah, but, but I'm keeping you here too long uh, well, as it that's is. That's not a problem. Let's sign off here and go get something to eat. How about that? Great. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm signing off. This is Patrick Nichols um, of Chevelle Supercars and Super Sports signing off with Cliff Gottlob, the Maverick engineer and legendary racer of L88 Corvette and a 1959 Corvette. Hope you enjoyed this video.